Hi there, welcome to the Chauvin's Nest. My name is Sandra and you're watching my Christmas series. Today I have five brand new Christmas in July DIYs that I hope you will love. For my first project, I'm using this 15 inch pizza pan. This one is quite sturdy compared to the ones you can get from the Dollar Tree. I did pick this up at Dollarama. What I'm doing is giving it a couple of good coats of Rust-Oleum clear matte finish because that's going to help my paint adhere to the metal. I'm starting off by using the color parchment. This is sort of an antique white kind of color. It's not quite cream, but it's not quite white. I just thought this would be really sweet for this vintage project that I'm doing. I'm going to give this two good coats, alternating my brush stroke direction for the second coat. If you follow me on my channel, you know that I get a lot of free printables from Pixabay. This is a website that allows you to use all of their images for free. All they ask is that you sign up for a free account. I printed off this vintage Santa on a piece of rice paper. Now the rice paper is not white and it's not as thin as tissue paper, but I still put it on a piece of regular printer paper and put it through my machine. You can see I just used some painter's tape to attach it to the top. And now I'm just going to cut it out. I'm putting the Santa on the left side of the pizza pan. I'm going to use Mod Podge to apply it. So I'll put a thin coat down, put the rice paper on top, and then go over it very gently with another coat of Mod Podge. If you don't have rice paper, you could definitely use tissue paper. You could even just use regular printer paper. Just know that you're gonna get a little bit of a thicker edge. The rice paper does kind of blend into the parchment color that I used to paint on the pizza pan. And that was my goal to begin with. I used my Cricut to cut out Merry and then Christmas in two different styles of fonts. And what I'm going to do now is use each of the little individual letters and put them on separately. What I want to do is create a curved Christmas starting on the lower portion of Santa's beard and going all the way up to the Merry. And you'll see in a minute what I mean. It's kind of hard to explain. If you can't find a large pizza pan like this, you could definitely use one of the wood rounds that you can pick up at Walmart or at the Dollar Tree. I just don't have access to any of these, so I thought this would be a great substitute. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. If you like what you see so far, I would love it if you could hit that red subscribe button and stick around a while. I've got lots more Farmhouse Christmas in store for you soon. I decided to draw in some lines with my pencil and I just kind of eyeballed the spacing, went all the way across and then I took my finger and rubbed on the pencil to give it more of a distressed look. I wanted to keep this looking vintage so I'm using some burlap ribbon with a little bit of lace on it and I did pick this up at the Dollar Tree. I've just created two loops and I'm hot gluing them right down onto the pizza pan. I'm going to repeat this process with another loop of bows but I'm going to make this one just a little bit smaller. Now I'm going to add a few different types of greenery. I'm going to start out by trimming off some of these greenery branches from an old garland that I have. I'm also going to use some of the cedar branches that you can use that are just above my hand. And then to the left of the screen, I've got some holly branches that I'm going to use too. I'm going to use hot glue to apply all of the greenery and I'm not really thinking of doing it any particular way. I'm just going to start filling it in, making it a little bit symmetrical on both sides and then I'm just going to make sure that it's nice and full and it looks really pretty. Whenever I'm working with greenery or florals, I'm always taking them apart. I never use the stems the way they come, they're either too big or they're too bulky or I wanna just have little bits and pieces of it. So don't be afraid to just cut things apart and make it work for you. 
I added a couple of pine cones inside the bow just to finish it off. And then the last thing I did was add some of the little holly branches that have some tiny little red berries. And I really love how this sign turned out. I think I probably should have put the Mary a little bit lower down so you could see it better, but I still think it's pretty neat. Now I'd like to take a couple of minutes to introduce you to my new best friend, Emma. She is a Trifo robot vacuum, and right now she's just sitting on her charging station getting ready to work. Once the house button on Emma is fully orange, that means she's charged and ready to go. You can simply open the lid and then push the button. And this is the extra large dustbin that she has included. And it's super easy to remove all of the dirt and also to clean out the filter that's included in the dustbin. You just push it back in and then close up her lid. Press the power button and Emma's ready to work. Emma is equipped with smart sensors, which mean she's able to clean efficiently and effectively moving around your home with confidence. She has a longer main brush and six claw side brushes to create a much wider cleaning path, making quicker work of any room. Plus, a larger dustbin means less frequent emptying. She also has some pumped up power. The optimized vacuum fan creates twice the suction power of most other robot vacuums. Perfect for picking up all the dust, crumbs, pet hair, and more in a single pass. The high capacity battery keeps her going for up to 110 minutes. And when she's tired, Emma automatically returns to her charging base to prepare for the next job. You can also use Alexa to send her to work. Just say, Alexa, turn on Trifo, and Emma will get started or pick up where she left off. Emma can do all sorts of different types of floors, carpets, and I am so happy with how she works. I turned her on the other day, went outside, did some gardening, and when I came back in 20 minutes later, my main floor was completely clean. I am in love with Emma and I know I'll be using her every day. If you are interested in learning more about Emma, the Trifo Robot Vacuum, I'll have some links down in my description box. One will be for US residents and the other will be for Canadian residents. I am really happy that this Emma Robot Vacuum is in my home. It's going to help me so much with my house cleaning and I'll be able to keep up with it a lot better. I always do at least one birdhouse decor for each season. So I decided to take this large birdhouse that I got at Dollarama for $3.50. I'm going to be painting the bottom portion of it black first because there's a lot of different brighter colors and I wanna paint it with that same parchment color and the black will just help to camouflage all of those bright colors and give me more of an even coat when I go on with the parchment. I'm gluing together two of these rounds. One is a little bit smaller than the other, and that's going to become the base of the birdhouse. Once these are clamped together and dried, then I'm going to give them a coat of this rustic red color. I believe it's called Pioneer Red, so it's sort of a rusty red color, and I thought that would be really great for a rustic farmhouse look. The black paint is now dry, so I'm gonna start by going with one coat of the parchment. I'm gonna end up needing to give it two coats of this parchment color, but I think the result is going to be worth it. I've got a huge stash of spindles and I found this one that was already cut down and it's the perfect height. It is white, so I'm going to give it just one coat of the parchment so it blends in with the look of the birdhouse. 
Now that the round and the spindle are dry, I'm going to be adding some weld bond glue to glue these two pieces together. You can see here that I left a square of the natural wood. I didn't paint everything on this bottom portion because I just find that glue works so much better when you have natural wood to natural wood. So it did stick really quickly and really easily without even using any hot glue. I didn't show you this, but I also painted the roof of the birdhouse with the same rustic pioneer red color, and then I glued everything together. Now I'm using a stencil brush, and I'm doing a dry brush technique with these Christmas tree stencils right on top of the birdhouse. I thought it would look really nice with something towards the bottom of it. At first I thought I would do some tissue paper printables, but I found these Christmas tree stencils. There's three different types that I have, and I thought that would be something a little bit different. So I'm just going to continue to dry brush as much as I need onto these stencils, and then I'm going to switch out with another one, and then just stagger them and go all the way around the birdhouse. I'm going to have each tree kind of fall off the edge of the birdhouse, but then I'm going to flip it and continue that same tree on the other edge, like you see me doing here. And then that's just gonna be a wraparound tree. This birdhouse was missing its peg, so I just grabbed one of my wooden dowels and I added some hot glue and then just pushed it in and held it into place until it was dry. To add some contrast, I painted the perch or the peg the same color as the roof and the base. I added four little wood cutout stars that I had also painted red to the top of the two trees on the front of the birdhouse and then one tree on either side of the birdhouse. I just used hot glue to attach them. I had added some of this Christmas tree ribbon to the spindle. I'll be able to show you the result of that in just a moment because I did forget to turn my camera on for that. I put it on on an angle and then I just thought I would add these two little other pieces to the top of the birdhouse on the roof just to tie it in. Since the Christmas trees on those little pieces of ribbon were a lot darker than the green that I used on the birdhouses, I decided to add a little bit of black. So I'm just dry brushing a little bit of black into the trees just to give them number one a little bit more dimension and to make them look a little bit of a darker green so they tie in with the Christmas trees. Then I'm going to take the same brush with some black and I'm going to distress the whole thing just very lightly dragging my brush over all of the white space and the roof and the base just giving it a really beautiful distressed look. I really love all of the muted colors on this piece and I think it turned out beautiful. I'm trying to use up what I have in my stash. So I found this Dollar Tree house. I pulled off the backing and then I printed off this Christmas tree background paper, just using regular printer paper. I'm going to trace it out and then using a glue stick, I'm going to glue it onto the backing of the house. Now I'm going to take some of these Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks and create a really whimsical rustic Christmas tree. I didn't want to have to cut any of these pieces so I'm just going to play around with a few different formations and then I finally decided on this. I finally decided to just put the blocks together like this with a diamond shape open in the center and then use one of the blocks as the base. I'm going to just hot glue these right onto the paper. I used some of the Dollar Tree wooden cubes to fill in those little spots that were in the middle of the tree. I think it looks really fun. The next thing I'm going to do is just paint the top edge with this sage color. Now this is something that I mixed up using some lighter green, some gray and some white and it just happens to complement the background paper really nicely. 
To finish off the project and hide the difference between the backing and the side of the house, I'm just using another strip of that background paper. I'm going to use a glue stick and then just glue that all the way around the side along the peak of the house and then up the other side as well. I really love the simple sort of primitive look of this piece and I think that's probably what I'm going to be doing for Christmas decorations this year when Christmas finally rolls around in December. Lately, I've been seeing a lot of old spindles being used as Christmas ornaments. So I went into my stash of little bits and pieces. I found these two pieces and I thought they would look really good together as one piece. So I'm just using my weld bond glue to glue them together and I'll set it aside to dry. I had another leftover bottom piece. It was very plain. So I went into my wood stash and found these dice that I have. I got these from Crafter Square at the Dollar Tree and I think they're absolutely fabulous. So I'm going to go ahead and glue one of them on top and then add a couple of other little pieces to finish this off. I've been hearing in the comments a lot of you looking for spindles and not being able to find any. I would suggest instead of going to the hardware stores where you're going to be paying full price, check out Facebook Marketplace in your area. If there's any estate sales or places where there's a house being torn down, maybe you can snag some of those spindles for free. Check some yard sales or thrift stores. They're kind of difficult to find, but I always get mine off of Facebook Marketplace. If you don't have the ability to grab spindles, you can always just use different bits and pieces of wood like I'm doing to create a spindle look. Dollar Tree carries all sorts of different wood pieces now. I'm sure you could probably glue some together and find a way to create somewhat of a spindle look yourself. This is one of the pieces that came in a set that I found at the thrift store. It was a little longer. I had trimmed it off to use part of it for something else. But I just love how rustic it is, how chippy and the stain is rubbed off in some places. You can just tell that this is super old. I'm just going to be taking some of this twine, tying it into a knot down at the very bottom. And that's what I'm going to use to glue onto the top of this spindle as the hanger. Sort of in the center, there's a bit of a flat spot. So I took some of this beautiful ribbon. I cut off a piece and I'm going to wrap that around. Then I'm going to create a two loop bow just using the two finger bow method and glue that on. And this one is done. If you're interested in learning how to create a double loop two finger bow, I do have a full tutorial on that down in my description box. It's a video just on making the two finger bow and I think that will really be helpful for you. It's nice and slow. The other spindle is dry now, so what I'm going to do is take some hot glue and some of that white twine and just wrap it around where the seam is, so where the two pieces are joined together. There's a little bit of some gapping in there, and this will just camouflage it. On the top of this one, there's a hole, so I decided just to take that same red ribbon and make a loop. I'm going to glue it together, and then I'm just going to use a bunch of hot glue and push it down into the hole, and that will become the hanger. Now, this portion of the spindle, as you can see, still has some raw wood color, so I'm just going to find my espresso paint. I'm going to add a little bit of that rustic red and give it somewhat of the same type of stained look as the spindle itself and that will just blend it in better. For this sort of make up spindle that I created I'm just using the same parchment paint and I'm going to give it just one rough coat. Then I'm going to distress it a little bit with some black paint and then I'm going to add a little burlap bow. Another hanger made out of the white twine and this one's done too.
thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I hope you enjoyed my Christmas in July DIYs today. And if you did, I would love it if you could give me a thumbs up. That gets me noticed more on YouTube and helps my channel grow. Here's a couple more videos you might like to watch. Bye for now.